Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. In this video, I'm gonna tell you more about our Marble Game Group project, and then I'll show you how to create a basic ball rolling mechanic. I created this mechanic for our Marble Game, and it's included in the Level Builder Unity package for this project. But first, I'd like to show you more of what I've created so far. Now, everything at the moment is super basic because I'd really like to show you the progress of this game as it evolves. And so we have a main menu with a quick start button that will randomly select a level. We then have a level select option, and at the moment I only have three levels, which I'm still working on, but I'll be adding more levels in addition to the levels that I hope you'll help with. This first level is a series of floors made out of ghost tiles, and the objective of this level will be the last marble to survive. This next level is a long ramp that gets skinnier and skinnier as it goes on. In this level, I'm going to have a whole lot more than just having a plain long ramp. I'll probably add in some obstacles for the marbles to avoid. And the objective of this level is to be the first marble to reach the end. And this last level is a spiral that I made in Blender, which gets smaller and smaller as it goes down. And the objective of this level will be to survive or be the first one to finish. Now, as you can see, we still have a long ways to go in order to get this game to the top of the charts. But my plan is to be regularly updating this project every Monday, and you'll be able to see those updates in WebGL form on the project page, which is linked in the description below. And if you want to learn more about this project and how to get involved, make sure that you click that link and go to the project page. Now, let's show you how to create a ball roll mechanic. All right, so first I'm going to demonstrate this ball mechanic. Now here you can see that I just have a ball and a platform, and if I press WSD, I can make the ball move around on the platform. Then if I press the jump button, you can see that my ball jumps up in the air. So to create this game mechanic, we're gonna to wanna to start with a primitive cube. So you can right click in your hierarchy, go down to 3D object and select cube. You can then scale this object out in the X and Z directions by 100. And this object should already have a mesh filter, a mesh render, and a box collider attached. We can then create our ball and we'll just use a primitive sphere. So we can right click in the hierarchy, go down to 3D objects, and select sphere. And this object should as well have a mesh filter, mesh render, and a sphere collider attached. But we'll want to add a rigid body to this object, so you can click on add component, and then just search rigid body, and select it. Now for the movement and the jump mechanic, I have two separate scripts. One I've called basic force movement, and the other I've called basic force jump. And so you'll want to create these scripts, and we'll open them up. And once again, we are using the new input system for this game mechanic, so you'll want to include the input system namespace. So I have using Unity Engine .input system. I've then added the script to my own namespace, but you don't have to. Inside our class, we'll want to create some new variables. The first is for a rigid body, so I have a rigid body, which I've called my RB. We then have a serialized field for an input action, which I've called WSD input. We then have a vector2 for movement input. Then we have three serialized fields, which are all floats. The first one I've called force. The second one I've called top x z speed. And the third I've called top y speed. Once we have these variables created, we then need to enable and disable our input action in the onEnable and onDisable functions. And so in the onEnable, I have WSD input.enable, and in the onDisable, I have WSD input.disable. We can then scroll down to the start function, and inside the start function, I have an if statement where we're checking to see if our top y speed is greater than zero. If it is, then we want to multiply it by negative one and save it back into itself. This is for ease of use in the inspector so that you don't have to remember to enter in a negative value for the top y speed. And this is to just prevent our ball from falling past a certain speed. Whereas we don't really need to worry about the positive y speed because there probably isn't going to be a moment in our game where our ball is going up at a super fast speed. And even if it is, it's eventually going to slow down because of gravity. And so inside this if statement, I have top y speed times equals negative one. Outside this if statement, we want to initialize our rigid body. And so I have my RB equals git component, and we're looking for a rigid body. And after this, we can then read in the player's input, which we'll do inside the update function. Inside the update function, we have movement input equals WASD input dot read value, and we're looking for a vector two. Then when we actually use this input to move the ball, we want to do this within the fixed update function because we're using physics. And we're going to use the add force function of our rigid body to move the ball in the X and Z directions based on our input. So I have my RB dot add force, and we're passing in a new vector three. For the X parameter, we're passing in movement input dot X, 
for the y we're passing in 0, and for the z we're passing in movement input dot y. We can then multiply this new vector 3 by our force variable. Now this one line of code is all we need to move our ball, but as long as the player keeps holding down one of the inputs, it'll keep adding force to our ball, and our ball will keep getting faster and faster. And so we want to clamp the player's speed. And because our ball can still be falling at any time, we want to first handle the y speed, and then we'll handle the x and z speed. So here I have an if statement where we're checking to see if my rb.velocity.y is less than our top y speed. And if it is, then we want to set our rigid body's velocity to have that top speed. So I have my rb.velocity equals new vector 3, and I'm passing in my rb.velocity.x, then top y speed, then my rb.velocity.z. After this, to make sure that we don't mess up this top y speed, we want to pull out the x and z components. And so I have a local vector 2 variable called temp xz, and I'm setting it equal to new vector 2, and I'm passing in my rb.velocity.x and my rb.velocity.z. We then want to check to see if the magnitude of these two components is greater than our top speed. And so I have if temp xz .magnitude is greater than top xz speed, we'll then normalize our vector 2 and multiply it by our top speed variable. And so I have temp xz equals temp xz dot normalized times top xz speed, after which we can put it back into our rigid body's velocity. So I have my rb dot velocity equals new vector 3, and I'm passing in temp xz dot x, we'll then keep the same y velocity, so I have my rb dot velocity dot y, and we'll pass in temp xz dot y for the z value. And that's everything that we need to have for a basic add force movement with top speed clamps. So we'll go ahead and save this script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we can select our ball object, and we'll attach our basic force movement script to this object. We can then set the key binding for our WASD input, and so so you click on the plus sign and then select add 2D vector composite. And then I've set the up to W, the down to S, the left to A, and the right to D on the keyboard. You can set these key bindings by double clicking on each one and then setting the path. We can then enter in some values for the force and top speed variables. For the force I have 10, for the top X Z speed I have 10, and for the top Y speed I have negative 50. Now at this point if you don't want your ball to have a jump mechanic then you can save this object as a prefab without the jump mechanic. But we'll go on to code the basic force jump script so we'll open that up. We're also going to be using the new input system inside this script and so I have using unity engine dot input system. Inside this class we want to create three variables and the first one is for our rigid body which is called my RB. We then have another input action which is a serialized field called jump input and then we have a serialized field of type float called jump force. We're then going to register a function call to our input action. We'll do this within the on enable function. So I have jump input dot performed plus equals and then jump. We also want to enable our jump input. So I have jump input dot enable and we'll do the opposite within the on disable function. And so you can copy these two lines of code and paste them in and then just change the plus equals to a minus equals and change the enable to disable. Within the start function, we're going to initialize our rigid body. So I have my RB equals git component, and we're looking for rigid body. And then we can create our registered function. So I have jump, and this function requires a parameter of type input action dot callback context. It's called obj. Inside this function, we first want to check to see if our ball is grounded. And so I have a local variable of type bool called is grounded, and I'm setting it equal to false. We then have an if statement for a raycast. And this is physics.raycast, and we're passing in transform.position for the starting position of our ray, and vector3.down for the direction. We then have transform.localscale.y divided by 2 plus 0.1f for the distance. If this if statement is true, it means there's an object directly below our ball. And so we're going to set our isGrounded variable equal to true. We can then have another if statement where we're checking to see if isGrounded is still equal to false. And if it is, then we just want to return because it means our player is not grounded and so we don't want to jump. But if it's true, we'll continue on with this function. We have an if statement where we're checking to see if obj.readValue looking for float is greater than zero. If it is, then it means our player has pressed the jump input button. And so inside this if statement, we want to apply the jump for so I have my RB dot add force. We're passing in a zero for X, jump force for Y, and a zero for Z. 
And that's all we need for a basic jump mechanic. So we can save the script and go back to Unity. We can then select our ball object and we'll drag our basic force jump script onto this object. We can then set the key binding for the jump input to be something like the space bar. So we'll click the plus sign and then select add binding. We can then double click on it and use the path drop down menu to select space bar. Then for the jump force, I've set it to 500. And once you've done this, you can make a prefab out of this object and use it in any scene of your game. Now that's everything I'm going to show you in this lesson on how to create a basic ball rolling mechanic. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and subscribe to our channel so you can be notified whenever we publish new videos.